Hi, everyone. This is Sam Silverman, Managing Partner of EB5AN. Thank you for taking time to join us uh, on today's webinar. Today, we're going to be chatting about our new rural EB5 loan project, Kindred Resort at Keystone. Um, during today's webinar, uh, if you have questions, please submit them in the chat box. And if we have time, we'll try and cover them at the end. If you'd like to get a copy of the slides, please email us at info at eb5an.com. Uh, and we'll happily uh, send over a copy of the slides. A recording of this video will also be available uh, on our website and on YouTube in the next week or so, uh, so you'll be able to refer back to it in, in the future. Okay, to start today's presentation, uh, we're going to run through some of the primary investment merits of the Kindred Resort at Keystone project, and then we're going to get into uh, some of the more detailed information about the project, recent construction, job creation, and condominium sales uh, as well. And on uh, the webinar today, along with myself, my partner Mike uh, Schoenfeld is, is with us as well. Uh, and uh, we'll be covering these few slides to start with, and then we'll get into uh, some more of the details on the project. Um, so to start with, first, one of the things that's really compelling about this project is its location. Um, it is truly ski in, ski out, uh, for those of you who are skiers. Uh, the resort is located directly at the base of the Keystone Ski Mountain, and it's 55 feet from the main gondola. So at the end of the day skiing, you're tired, you wanna relax, jump in the pool, whatnot. It's literally a 20 second walk from the ski area where you take off your skis, to getting back to the condominium and the hotel. So the best location uh, possible, given uh, the proximity of the project to the, to the main gondola. Second thing, um, proven success to date. This is a condominium and hotel project, and more than two thirds of the condominiums have already been pre-sold with substantial non-refundable cash deposits, and so, this really reduces a lot of the immigration risk and financial risk for investors because there's demand to complete the building and there is a proven ability to generate revenue, sales revenue, at the prices that the project is charging at the location. Um, so a lot of a lot of that risk has been has been eliminated because two thirds of the condos are already are already pre-sold. Third, job creation. Uh, as most of you probably know, you have to create at least 10 new jobs per EB-5 investor to qualify for the permanent green card. Given the advanced stage of the construction of the project, more than 700 jobs have already been created, uh, more than 740 actually. And so that means that the first 74 investors to join the project already have all 10 required jobs needed to complete the entire EB-5 process successfully. Um, there will be a total of 100 investors in the project, and we expect to have over 1,000 jobs, enough jobs for every investor uh, in just the next few months. So substantial job creation. Um, all the jobs are already there for the first 74 investors, and enough jobs for all investors in just the next few months. Uh, fourth here is the qualification for the project as rural. Uh, many of you likely know that uh, rural projects are very popular right now because they feature priority, faster processing for the I-526C application for green card approval. And there's a larger, the largest 20% visa set aside of reserve visas available only for investors who select rural projects. And as we've noted here, there is no backlog uh, in the rural category for China, India, uh, and Vietnam. So those are, those are four of the kind of initial uh, investment merits we want to cover. And Mike, uh, my partner, I'll let him jump in and share his thoughts on these second four uh, investment merits before we get into details uh, about um, some more of the specific aspects of the project. Yeah, perfect. And so one of the questions that investors usually have is the term. So we've uh, started to structure deals where investors are not reliant on timelines based on other investors in the deal. So this has a rolling five-year loan term where each investor has their own specific five-year term. 
And it starts on the day that their money is fully invested in the project to give certainty on the exact day, the last possible day that investors could get their money, money back. The sixth point is something really unique here. So every deal that we work on at EB5AN, our goal is to do two key things. One is to minimize immigration risk with under construction deals. Second is to find financial security. So in this project, it's already well under construction with the full capital stack in place. But since it is a condominium deal and a hotel deal, we were able to negotiate where we are starting as mezzanine debt, uh, reducing the amount of the construction senior loan. But once the project is finished, there's enough pre-sales to repay the senior construction loan and the EB-5 will remain on the project as a senior recorded mortgage. So what this means is that even though today it's mezzanine debt, once the project is done, it actually flips into a senior secured mortgage on the deal, which we think makes us very unique in the industry to have a senior loan on an operating asset. Um, and we're still getting the benefits of all the other financing in the project. Next, the partnership with Sotheby's has already proven its results. Um, they are the exclusive listing agent on this project and have already sold over two thirds of the condominiums with 20% non-refundable deposits. And last, any time that you're developing in ski areas or smaller towns that qualify as a rural area, it's critical to find a good developer with experience in that same area, since it's not like New York uh, or building in Miami. And the development team on this project has a lot of experience uh, in Denver, in the mountains of Colorado, as well as internationally, building large scale projects and deals similar to this. So we're just really excited about this deal from our two key criteria of immigration safety and financial safety. And we think that it's been designed to protect all of those interests. So, so this is one of the, the best things we can show in the slide. So this is the current construction uh, of the project right now. This picture was taken in September, so very recently. And as you can see, one of the vertical towers, it's actually already been topped off. Um, they had a topping off ceremony a couple weeks ago, and uh, the middle pad for the hotel is underway, and the east tower is about to start. So it's just really exciting to see the building going vertical and, and demonstrates the job creation that is occurring. One, one other thing to note from this photo, you can clearly see the ski mountain directly kind of to the right uh, and up in the corner of the building. And the primary, the, the only ski gondola on this mountain is just behind the building there. It's this small uh, cylinder-like building here. And you can see the gondola line here going, going up. Obviously, this was taken in the summer. Um, but in the winter, this bridge is completely full with skiers. And this is the primary uh, entrance point and exit point for skiers on, on the mountain. And before we go into more specifics, one of the things that we're proud of is we've been working on this deal uh, for almost a year now. And we decided to wait to launch this until we were comfortable with the job creation. So as you can see from the vertical construction, it's created hundreds of jobs, over 750 to date. Um, and we waited for it to be the right time to launch the EB-5 side of the deal to make sure that our investors were in the best position to succeed on the immigration financial side. So we think that that's really important to note is uh, the advanced stage of construction. Yep, and, and just to rewind a little bit, a little bit about EB-5AN, we're a national leading investment fund manager. We've been in the EB-5 space uh, for more than 10 years at this point. Our regional centers cover uh, the entire continental U.S. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm Sam Silverman and my partner Mike. Uh, and a little bit about our background bios are here on, on this slide. We'll skip through that. Um, so one, one of the things we do want to spend a moment to, to chat about is our commitment to investment transparency. One of the things that we think really um, sets us apart from a lot of the other operators in the space is our willingness to be open book with, with our investors. And what, is, what does that really mean? It means investors can ask questions and get real answers and get access to financial statements, get access to copies of all available documents for the project, franchise agreement, loan agreement, all the documents that we have available, including the project financials, we make available to, to investors. 
And that's really unique uh, and, and important because investing in any project, one of the first things that any investor should do is review the financial statements to make sure they have a clear understanding of what the true financial position of a project is before, before investing their, their own funds. And these are some of the different um, media outlets where our uh, articles and, and projects have been featured over the years. A map showing where many of our investors have come from, more than 60, 60 countries and counting uh, to date. This is a uh, slide laying out many of our prior uh, successful projects around the US. And for those of you who aren't as familiar with rural uh, and the new reserve categories under the RIA, um, generally speaking, rural projects are highly advantageous, particularly for high volume EB5 countries like China and India that have faced uh, long backlogs in the past, because not only are there going to be more visas available given the 20% set aside, but because these investors are going to get priority processing, get their applications approved faster, they're also going to be earlier in line and will actually be eligible to collect their green cards sooner than investors who choose non-rural non projects. So those two um, advantages are really impactful, particularly for Chinese and Indian investors. Um, they are impactful for, for non-China and Indian investors, but just not, not as impactful um, because the reserve visas really only apply uh, for high volume countries like China and, and India. And again, so when, when we look at the different categories available under the RIA, we can see that the rural category has the most favorable uh, treatment. So priority processing, and you can concurrently file, which means if you're in the US already, you can get a work permit in just a few months and a travel authorization or advanced parole uh, in, in less than a year typically. Minimum investment is 800,000 and the reserved set aside visas, 20% is the largest. So for all of those reasons, best in class across each category, that's why most investors prefer, prefer rural projects today. All right, Mike, do you wanna take us through some of the highlights? We talked about a couple of these, but there's a few others that we haven't, we haven't covered as well. Yeah, absolutely. So this project overall, it's a hotel in the middle of 107 rooms and 95 condominium units that are for sale and will be able to be put back into the rental pool. So this project is actually being built on land that used to be owned by Vail Resorts, the largest ski operator uh, in the world. And they are going to be the, the group that's managing the hotel. So Vail has select prop projects um, in their portfolio where they operate hotels, usually right at the base of their ski mountains as the actual operator. And it's flagged by them as well. And it makes it so um, they're able to control kind of demand and it typically leads to higher price points at their hotels. Um, part of the key here is the job creation. So they've already created uh, well over 700 jobs for the project and more every day. Additionally, when we say security B5 loan investment, it's mezzanine now and it flips into that senior facility, um, all in a fully capitalized deal. So this deal really checks all of the boxes for us. It's of substantial size, about 300 million in total cost. EB5 is going to be 80 million of that, so about 25% uh, of the overall deal. And we have all of the different safety features that we like. So this, this fits very nicely into what we like to do with EB-5 projects. And we're fortunate that it does fall in a rural area that's a very high tourism driven area. Yep, and as, as we mm -hmm. talked about earlier, you can see here that the first building, the East Tower, uh, or excuse me, the West Tower is the one that's been recently topped off. And then they're moving kind of west to east with a hotel in the middle and then the ski club uh, will, will be at the base of the East Tower. So in, a, in addition to a fully you know, amenitized hotel, the project also features a private owner and ski club, um, which is another source, another unique source of revenue generation, just given the proximity to the mountain, um, having the ability to store skis and have a little private amenity available for people um, you know, who may or may not be condominium owners is really 
is really compelling just given the location of of the project and its close proximity to the mountain. And then looking at the building facing the mountain, so from the other side, we can see retail amenity uh, and restaurant space on the ground floor, and then an outdoor pool area, hot tub, et cetera, um, right there in the middle, adjacent uh, on the right side there, the hotel, and then this ski club there on the bottom of, of the East Tower. And again, all you know within just a matter of seconds walk from, from the primary uh, gondola there at the base of, of the mountain. We talked about Sotheby's a little bit earlier. We can skip through that. Uh, Mike and I were pleased to be able to visit the project site and the sales office uh, earlier this year. So we got a full tour uh, of, of the sales process, the renderings, uh, and the different floor plans available. And as you can see here, um, this is a map of some of the recent um, pre-sales and, and the floor plan of the project. Again, 20% buyer deposit. A lot of the units that have been sold already are actually the um, lower floors with the worst views. Uh, and so the remaining units are you know, typically a little bit better view and are expected to command even, even higher price points, even though they've already sold more than 110 million in, in sales to date. And the project still has you know, two plus years before completion to sell the remaining 33% of the condos. Yeah, at this point, the developer is holding a lot of those premium units back. They've set all the records in the county for price per square foot on sales. Um, and they are holding back many of these premium units because as, uh, for condominium developments, towards the end is always when you get the highest prices as it's closest to completion or actually complete and buyers can see uh, what they're getting. So this, this slide does a very nice job of showing where we're at in terms of how many units are sold. So over two thirds sold. Uh, with many of the best units left and you can see where they are in terms of the spend of the project which directly translates into the job creation where they're at about 130 million dollars to spend out of that 300 million so projects moving well uh, they're working through all of the spend and we have a couple years left of construction for them to uh, finish this out Mike do you want to walk us through the capital stack and explain kind of why this is really attractive from an EB5 investor perspective yeah, and uh, this capital stack has several different features. So when you think about the equity in a project like this, it's made up of the developer equity, the preferred equity, and the condominium deposits, which are able to be used for construction. So when you add all of those categories together, we're at about 40% equity in this project. Additionally, this project did qualify for the CPACE funding, which ends up being a type of loan that's uh, not recording a mortgage and it is backed by future tax revenue. So it's very accretive capital for the deal. And that's the 18% that you see. And how EB-5 is being used on this project is it will directly replace the need for the senior construction loan, which is already executed. So although this construction loan is sized for up, upwards of that 138 million, the EB-5 will replace 80 million of that and will be a majority of the senior debt on this project after, and that senior loan will be repaid from condominium proceeds. So this is a very healthy capital stack that was uh, in place as we've been contemplating EB-5 for over a year here and working with the developer to get to this point of the development. And uh, we're all excited to now be introducing this into the market and what we think is a best in class uh, EB-5 rural deal. Yep, and I think I think one one other point just to highlight there again is that EB five is not critical to project completion, right? All of the funds needed to build the project are identified uh, on this chart, and so EB five is just reducing a slightly more expensive senior loan that's already been funded and and is committed to. And when we look at um, you know, the total equity, you know, you basically see that that equity is remaining in place. EB-5 coming in is not uh, reducing the developer's equity. It's really just slightly lowering the cost of, of the debt. And so, you know, the developer and the different equity holders are obviously, you know, still equally motivated to complete the project and have it be, be a success. This is a quick map showing, showing the timeline of the project. And as we can see, you know, construction on uh, the vertical construction really just got going earlier this year, and there's still you know about two years 
uh, or so left of, of, of full-on vertical construction before uh, con construction gets finished. These are some more photos, groundbreaking, uh, some, some different angles of the mountain there that you can see. And then, Mike, let's, let's, let's talk about jobs for a minute as well. Yeah, so when you think about job creation from the EB-5 side, we're a regional center, and that's how jobs are calculated. So what you need to do for job creation is spend money directly on construction costs. So it's, very, uh, it's an Excel model of the dollar spent equals jobs created. So as you can see, by the end of this year, we're going to have more than the 1,000 required jobs for all 100 EB-5 investors in this project. We're already... Uh, over 740 jobs, and that was as of a couple months ago when we did the calculation. So um, when an investor is thinking about the job creation and ensuring that their green card becomes permanent, first, your money has to be invested. Second, you have to create those 10 jobs per investor. And within the next two months, all those jobs will be created for all 100 investors, and we have over two times the jobs needed for every EB-5 investor. So again, this is how we think about projects. We always want to make sure our investors are going to get their green card and it becomes permanent. So we like deals that have created the jobs that are needed for our EB-5 investors. Yep, and that, that kind of ties in nicely with just generally how we evaluate projects, which is first from an immigration safety perspective, and then second from a financial safety perspective, right? So first on immigration safety, is the project going to get built? And how is EB-5 coming in? Well, all the funds are identified. The project's not dependent on EB-5. They're reducing an already in place senior loan. And at the end of construction, we'll have more than double the required number of jobs needed. And as of today, we already have enough jobs, 10 each for the first 74 investors. And then looking at the project from a financial perspective, we've got strong proven market demand with non-refundable deposits for two thirds of the units already, and still two years left before the building's even done and before buyers can actually close. We have an I-5260 approval refund guarantee uh, as well. And then the loan itself following completion of the project and the senior loan repayment from condo proceed sales, the EB-5 loan becomes senior with a recorded mortgage on, on the site. All right, now we'll spend just a minute or two on, on, on the condo proceeds, uh, on the, the condo aspect of the project. So we did a quick analysis showing where many of the buyers are coming from. You know, as you can see, many of them are local, uh, which is a really good sign that, you know, the locals have, you know, identified the unique um, value of, of this project. There hasn't been a, a project anywhere near the size uh, or type of this project in Keystone in the last 20 years. So a lot of unmet demand there. And a lot of the locals recognize that and want to have uh, a weekend place to, to, to go skiing. And so when we look at the analysis generally of, of, of the condominiums, we can see average uh, you know, sales price to date of $1,400 approximately and $110 million uh, in total sales value to date. And the remaining units, as we discussed earlier, are a little bit larger uh, with better views and are going to likely be sold you know, closer towards the project's completion to maximize uh, the revenue of the project. And Mike, do you want to walk us walk us through through this? Yeah. So part of the reason that we like this deal is because when you sell these condominiums at the end of the project, they are then first used to repay the senior loan, which effectively takes out the other debt in the project that's ahead of us and allows for us to become the senior pro uh, the senior debt on the project. So this is a stair step down of what's already been pre-sold and what's going to be left, how much is due on signing, then the 20% non-refundable deposits that we already have. As the, the core and the shell is finished, then that next 10% becomes due and all of these uh, Pre-sale deposits in the middle can actually be used directly on construction expenses. And at the end of the deal, those condos are sold and it's used to repay the senior. The other reason that we like a project like this is that these units will very likely be put back into the rental pool uh, for the hotel that Vail manages. Uh, so these are all units that are very easily um, rented, just like the hotel rooms. And that creates additional ongoing revenue for our collateral after the project is done, which includes the hotel, 
the retail, um, all of the uh, rental revenue uh, that's being earned by the hotel, the ski school, and everything else commercial related to the project. And yeah, this is just another illustrative example of how the condo proceeds go to repay the loan. Great. All right. So now we'll, we'll shift gears a little bit and chat about location. Um, so when we look at the location of the project within the Keystone uh, Village and, and the mountain, we can see it's perfectly located here, uh, right at kind of the primary village and at the base of, of the mountain there. This is the parking lot here. And then uh, you can see the village here. And then the main gondola is just here at the end of, of this red dot. And again, close proximity. Um, what a lot of people want to do at the end of the day after going skiing is not have a long walk uh, with all their ski gear. Carrying skis uh, can be, uh, you know, can be very heavy and uncomfortable boots. So you want to be very close uh, to your final destination, ideally. And so that's exactly what uh, this resort is going to offer to uh, to to buyers and to skiers who want to stay in the hotel. This is a little bit more detail about the mountain's profile, elevation. Uh, it's one of the oldest resorts in the U.S., over a million uh, visitors, uh, almost 130 different trails. And when we compare Keystone across uh, some of the other um, named ski resorts, we can see, you know, it's fairly comparable uh, and has, you know, a substantial amount of runs and night skiing uh, as, as well. And one of the most unique aspects of the resort is its proximity to Denver. So Denver is the main kind of international airport that's close by. And it's, you know, within about a two hour drive of, of the airport, which is a lot closer than some of the other Aspen, Vail, Beaver Creek, some of the other resorts in, in the area. So if you're flying in in Denver, or if you live in Denver and you want to go skiing, Keystone is the shortest drive, which really does matter in the winter when you know, conditions can be less than ideal for driving. And when we look at the, this chart here and compare <clears throat> driving distance and times, we can see that Keystone is the shortest drive, both in terms of distance and in, in an estimated driving time. So that, that really makes it compelling, um, you know, for, for visitors and residents to visit. This is the same information, but just displayed uh, graphically. And so you can see here Keystone, the shortest to Denver, but then you look at some of the others, Vail, Beaver Creek, Avon, Aspen, Snowmass, um, you know, significantly longer drive to get down to Aspen or Snowmass, almost four hours, whereas Keystone, you know, it's an hour and 40 minutes. So that, that is a material difference, especially when we're talking about driving in the winter. Okay, as, as we talked about earlier, um, the hotel is going to be managed by Rock Resorts, which is the subsidiary of Vail Resorts, which is a publicly traded company and basically the largest uh, ski operator globally. And they are going to be the ones managing uh, the hotel, uh, which we're really, really excited about um, because as the largest uh, operator, um, they have access to a very large customer database, and a lot of their database is based on their sales of the Epic Pass, uh, which is essentially an annual ski pass uh, that gives buyers season-long access to all of Vail's resorts. So if you're skiing a lot uh, and you want to go to many different resorts, you're going to buy a Vail Epic Pass. They sold several million of these in the last season. And this pass, as we've got noted here, draws visitors specifically to Vail Resorts and disincentivizes people to visit non-Vail Resorts because you get discounts only at Vail properties. And Keystone is one of these properties. And so if you buy an Epic Pass, the odds of you going to Keystone you know, significantly go up uh, to ski the mountain. And then if you're skiing the mountain, you're likely going to need accommodation somewhere to stay nearby, which you know, makes it more likely that you would be staying at uh, this new hotel. And Vail's access to all of this unique customer data, emails, demographic information, uh, they'll be able to use that information to promote uh, the Keystone, uh, Kendrick Resort at Keystone Hotel once it opens. And Vail's executed on this same approach in a number of their other uh, ski mountains, several here you can see in Vail, Beaver Creek, 
um, by owning a hotel right at the base of their own mountain, they're able to very easily drive traffic to that hotel. Uh, and that allows them to command uh, a higher price. And the fact that they have the database combined with the location of the hotel and its close proximity to the mountain uh, should make this very easy for them to uh, achieve a high occupancy in, in the hotel. Uh, and this kind of plays out based on publicly available information from their recent 10K. Uh, when we look at ADR occupancy uh, and RevPAR, some of the main statistics uh, from which you can evaluate a hotel's performance, we can see that Vail operated hotels when compared to some of their competitors significantly outperform uh, both in terms of ADR and RevPAR. And so that really just kind of, you know, is the proof that, you know, Vail operated hotels do better than, than non-Vail operated hotels. Uh, and this is going to be a, you know, Vail operated property uh, through Rock Resorts. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but again, you know, the Keystone Resort is uh, one of the top most visited mountains uh, in the United States. It's actually number four, uh, just behind Breckenridge, Vale, and Park City. And so, you know, it is it is one of the top locations, particularly given its close proximity to Denver, uh, which makes it, you know, very easy to access. And because it's owned by Vale and operated by Vale, a lot of the Epic Pass holders are are going there. Right, so that that also helps to drive a lot of the traffic. And again, here we can see, you know, the advantage of of its proximity to Denver, all the way here on the right side. All right, we'll move over to project credentials. Mike, do you want to walk us through through this section? Sure. So one of the development team members is the Interland team. So this is a large developer, uh, primarily based in Mexico, that is also doing a uh, large development in uh, Denver and with lots of experience, uh, as, as you can see, over $3 billion of project development costs. So a very experienced large developer uh, in this project. And additionally, as I mentioned, it's really critical to have that local knowledge in these types of ski towns. So the rest of the team comes from the mountains of Colorado uh, for the groups that have developed hospitality and other um, residential developments in nearby areas um, of Eagle, Summit County, uh, and all around both Vail uh, and uh, Keystone area. And this is that local knowledge combined with the larger developers experience as well as their experience in Denver that provides that unique combination uh, to bring a project like this to fruition and uh, build it and be successful in the project. Yep. And, and to wrap up, we'll spend a few minutes talking about just generally why investors um, have chosen to work with EB5AN uh, in, in, in the past. Mike, do you want to walk us walk us through these and in the context of the Keystone project? Yeah, in every deal, we have those two key lenses, immigration and financial safety. So first, we have our I-526 approval guarantee. So in the event your I-526 e application was denied, you would uh, very quickly get your money back because we don't think it's fair for the developer to get use of your money for the full loan term if uh, your I-526 isn't guaranteed. Now we do have 100% approval on all private projects and we've always created the job. So the main reason this could happen would be a source of funds issue. So we expect your immigration attorney to take care of that and hopefully we do not have to use this guarantee. Next, the projects that we work on are fully committed. What that means is that the project will be built whether one EB-5 investor comes or all of the EB-5 investors are located. And typically the projects are already well underway and under construction with the capital being drawn upon. Next, we don't wanna to have to rely on operational performance for the jobs. We leave very large job creation cushions and construction alone is enough to create all of the jobs needed for EB-5. So in a project like this, even if the buildings were built and the hotel never opened, every investor would still get their EB-5 green card and it would become permanent. Fourth, we view our role as very important. So we are a regional center operator and we cover all 50 states with our regional centers and we are the fund manager. 
So we are not the developer um, ourselves. And we think this is important because we want to be that third party that represents investors. So we manage the funds that are being loaned to the developer and enforce all of the rights. So to avoid any conflict of interest where developers just taking the money themselves and using it, we serve as that middle layer to uh, administer the funds and actually to also be the regional center. Um, and part of our focus is on transparent financial reporting. Uh, my background's in private equity at a large leverage buyout shop for this. We view our EB-5 partners the same as any limited partner and believe they should be kept in the loop, updated frequently on progress of the project, job creation, financial status. So we provide these uh, frequent updates to all of our investors. And lastly, we like to work with best-in-class development teams that specialize in the asset class and area that we're working on, which uh, is the case in Keystone and all of our other projects. So these are the key highlights. Almost every deal that we have is going to be very similar in these key aspects because we think that they're critical to project success. Great, great. So that that's the end of our of our formal presentation today. We we tried to kind of give a give a good sense of the different aspects of the Keystone project, the advanced job creation, the use of the capital in the project, pre-sales. Uh, there's a lot more information about the project that we'd be happy to share. Um, please feel free to reach out to us uh, and we can get you all of, all of that additional information. And if you are interested in coming to visit the project in person, we're happy to arrange uh, for, for a visit as well. Uh, and for more information, um, you can also find a full project video available on our website as well. Uh, and for access to the materials, documents, et cetera, um, please feel free to reach out to us. You can send us an email at info at EB5AN or feel free to uh, text or WhatsApp uh, that number as well. Uh, and we'll be happy to get you, get you all the information. Uh, and again, this is a really exciting project just given that it's a rural project it's well under construction created almost a thousand jobs um, it's got significant amount of equity lots of pre-sales already and it's going to be operated by you know the subsidiary of a public company um, that operates very successfully you know nearly identical type resort hotels you know within within the immediate vicinity so we we think this has all the best um, elements of of a rural project and so we're very excited to finally have it uh, have it available for investors mike any any other comments to add before we wrap up no, no we really appreciate everybody's time and i always encourage our investors to dig into projects understand the financials understand all of the details and the structure and we pride ourselves at eb5an for making all this information available and being very comprehensive in our analysis and providing it to investors. So I'd say please feel free to reach out to our team and we can run through all of the details of the project. Yep, yeah, I could, couldn't agree more with that. The key is, is show me, don't, don't tell me, right? You know, you've gotta ask, where's the proof of the jobs being created? Where's the executed senior loan documents? You know, where's the proof the equity's been invested? Where are the permits? You know, show me the construction photos. You know, where's the management agreement for the hotel? You know, let's see the financial statements. Are they accurate? You know, do they reflect, you know, the documents, you know, that are already in place? All those are key, key questions that you need to really dig into, um, you know, before you invest hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in any project, right? So just always be thinking about that regardless of what projects you're looking at. Those, those are critical questions that you that you really need to spend time on. All right, and, and with that, we'll we'll wrap it up. And again, any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we look forward uh, to working with you.